something else I'm going to try out here in a fairly sheltered spot is I'm going to try out my um, Acros recipe on probably on both cameras just to see what that's like and I'll um, take a, a standard raw picture as well and I'll see what it's like processing in Acros in, uh, processing in Acros and um, yeah the recipe for Acros particularly on the X-Pro1 so let's go and um, yeah let's try that out right down for a minute Oh, look at that, even the sun's even come out for me. Brill. Let's get me a quick raw capture done first. My standard raw capture first. Lovely. Ah. The level on this camera can drive you nuts, honestly. Okay, so let's now go to the Oh, custom what? Custom four. Here we go. Sun's gone. I mean, typical. We'll soldier on anyway. It's not going to be much of a back-to-back -back test that though. Something else I want to check. Uh, yeah, is the close focus on this thing. So this is a nice sheltered spot. It seems it's not very breezy at all here. Considering there are breaks in the cloud and it's a breezy old day, where is uh, the sun? It's behind the clouds up there, I can see that, but... I need a little bit here. I've taken this view before, but not with the... 12 mil. <laughs> Let's just have a look. I need to set the peaking on on this. Oh, that's what I don't like is that the peaking's on all the flipping time then, I think. Not sure I like that, to be honest. I really need to find a... Um, Manual focus assist setting that I like with the XT20 because I don't, I, think I don't, I mean, I like the magnification option, but I don't really enjoy peeking on permanently. I think it messes up your, um, your view and it only goes away when you press the shutter halfway. It seems dark to me, I thought it'd be the other way around. I thought it, had, uh, it should come on when you press the shutter halfway, otherwise be off, but you know, what do I know? Okay, we've got some nice um, kind of gradation of tones in the cloud ahead of us here, so I'm going to try my Acros and standard test with the XT20, so see how that goes. Okay, sure looks nice through the viewfinder. You might be able to see that through the viewfinder, I suppose. Those clouds look real good. Let's just do that same test with the X-Pro1. Because that's really... I think more of an interest. Because the A-Cross isn't available natively on the X-Pro1. In the bag. And now... A-Cross recipe. We're struggling for a little bit of sunshine here. We will soldier on. Hoping that we're getting some um, footage from this camera on my head. Phew. It's all a bit of a thing managing um, two video cameras at once, but I think I need to get used to it because sometimes it might be nice to um, film some B-roll as well. We've got a buzzard up there. I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it. It's too far away on this. He's up there by the trees. 
I've got a long lens with me for Fuji today, but it ain't be long enough for that. He's too far away. I did see, which I hadn't really looked at before, but um, Fuji do make a 100 to 400 zoom, but I think it's pretty expensive. They also make a 200 um, prime, which apparently is, I reckon, one of the optically one of the best lenses Fuji have ever made, but I think it's wicked expensive. So pretty unlikely to be going down that route. And really, I probably haven't got, a, you know, I don't know, have I got a body to do that? Do I have a camera body to do it justice? Is the XC20 okay for that? I suppose it would be, but uh, it's not an awful camera. It's not a bad camera at all. But um, it's not like with the Micro Four Thirds where I feel as though my EM1 body, even though it's, you know, it's getting on a little bit, is still you know, a top quality piece of kit. And I don't feel that uh, my panel like it 100 to 400 is wasted on that uh, on that body. I wonder why they left some of the trees here, just old ones like like this one here, because it seems to be a little bit kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's nice that they've left some, don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of trees. I just wonder how they pick which ones to leave. It's not that they all look that healthy. I mean, this one's got a load of bits missing at the bottom end. Uh, although, you know, I think these particular pine do tend to be a bit sparse low down anyway. But, uh, they're very sparse, some of them. Very sparse indeed. Looking at some of this cloud, wouldn't entirely surprise me. I've got a soaking. But that never surprises me. If I'm going to get a soaking, it is only July after all. What else can you expect? Oh, this camera straps here, I'm going to stop it squeaking. There we go. It's a bit better. Interesting looking bench coming up. There might be a, a 12 millimeter moment about to um, about to arrive. I continually wondering whether we're going to get some sun as well. Doesn't really look like it just at the moment. But, uh, we have got an interesting looking, very rustic sort of bench here. Might be able to do something with this. A bit of a fire here as well, over there. Let's um, see what we can do. Properly quiet over here today. Not sure. I've done a few across type tests there with the both both cameras and we'll see what we think when we get around to processing those. I'm actually trying to just establish which is the uh, best way to head back now. Um, in terms of the handling test for the X-Pro1 with the grip, I think I'd probably do prefer it with the grip, but I think I'll need to take those uh, peak design type strap hangy things off because they tend to get in the way a little bit 
of your right hand so they might have to go so just um, just walking back now we haven't been over that shit and done the tests or some of them strange thing is that when I switched the X-Pro 1 into the A-Cross type recipe there's a real transformation in what you see in the viewfinder and I really enjoyed just, just using it as a black and white camera um, interesting because some of the pictures I took some of the photos I took there towards the end I was thinking oh yeah I'll record these in standard profile as well just to make sure that it's a good test and a fair test and I've done the comparisons and, and all that good stuff and I will do the comparisons on the PC I'll look at the pictures in the recipe that I've used there which is supposed to be an Across-ish type recipe for X-Trans 1 and I'll convert the, uh, I'll hack the files so that I can actually use the Silky Pix Across camera setting as well or profile as well and you know we'll see how it all looks but it's very intriguing because it was enjoyable just to use the X-Pro one with a completely manual focus lens Makey 28mm and yeah it was a real good um, real nice experience to be doing something like that just a bit of a change so we certainly got that tested the grip was good as I said so we tested the grip we tested at least the Acros type recipe um, tested the head cam uh, didn't test any other recipes but then it's probably not the right environment for testing the other recipes probably going to go down to the border to do that there's some new build stuff going on urban industrial type stuff so I'll test those down there what else was I testing? oh yeah the head, head cam we'll see how that see what the footage is like from that i to try not to get run over now looks like I've got the food delivery van coming towards me nope, he stopped he's going back let's go someone's uh, no. Sainsbury's man has turned off so I'm not about to get run over by the delivery van so that's handy so yeah, it's now Four past six, more sunshine now than we've had a week. <sighs> yeah, it's time to go home, so I'm just heading back. And it will be, yeah, nice to see what's happened here in terms of. Um, I'm hoping we've got some good, uh, some good results with the Makey 28 and also the Samyang 12.